Hi there, welcome to today's webinar. Uh, we're ready to get started here with Ryan, um, and he is going to talk about why we should be using Google Plus Hangouts. We're really excited to talk about this topic today. I'm Madeline Riley, I'm the community manager over at Ed Social Media. I'll be moderating today's event. So we'll use the hashtag Ed, uh, number sign ed social media so hashtag ed social media for the webinar today feel free to use twitter as a forum for questions or comments and you can also use the forum on our screen um, we'll queue those up and then at the very end of ryan's presentation we will come back to those questions so i bet you're kind of wondering why we're not using google plus to host this event but we figured since many of you are probably still in that exploratory stage for google plus uh, we stuck with stuck with that uh quote unquote old technology with go to meeting so uh, hopefully you can take what you learn here today and use it in your own space. Um, and Ryan, I think, is going to do a follow-up post on with a, a little bit more of the how-to. So because of this fast format, uh, again, we're going to keep the questions to the end. And if all goes according to plan, we will have a recorded version of today's presentation that you can view later um, on our blog at edsocialmedia.com. So if you're not familiar with today's presenter, um, Ryan has been in the independent school scene for a while now. He attended Proctor Academy. He's now based in San Francisco and works for the very popular Wikispaces. Um, he, before that, was leading the charge for sales over at Whipple Hill. So he's had a lot of experience in the independent school world. And we're really excited to talk with Ryan today about Google Plus Hangouts. So thank you, Ryan, and I'll kick this over to you. All right, thank you so much, Maddie. Um, so, folks, yeah, you know, one of the first things to think about is why didn't we do this in uh, Google Plus Hangouts? And it's interesting. Um, there's a few kind of caveats you should be aware of when you start to consider this as an option to communicate with folks. One is the individual who sets this up needs to have a Google Plus account. So, um, as Maddie just described, one of the reasons why we didn't do that in there is we went on the assumption that a lot of people might not have Google Plus accounts. So um, I'm going to go through not exactly how to set up a Google Plus account, but what you can do once you um, have that set up, whether you're an institution or an individual. So I'm actually going to go into full screen mode. Um, today we're going to talk a little bit about why you should be using Google Plus Hangouts as a communication methodology at your organization. Um, First and foremost, I appreciated the um, the distinguished uh, uh, bio that um, you just described, Maddie. Um, so my name is Ryan Baus. I am um, living in San Francisco. Uh, I'm just recently a dad, so my son turns one this December, and life has been uh, amazing. Um, I've been, yeah, I mean, I've been in the independent uh, private school education space now for six years. Um, I did go to Proctor Academy. I went to the Landmark School in Beverly, Massachusetts. I served on both alumni councils, and for a period of time, I was the chairman of the annual fund for the Landmark School. So as I started to use Google Plus in my uh, workplace, I started to think a little bit about how to use Google Plus Hangouts specifically for the independent school. Um, and I'll talk a little bit about that later. But I, I specifically remember a time where I went to a new parent uh, welcome dinner as an alumni for the Landmark School where they introduced um, a series of alumni to the current parents of students, new students actually. And there was all this kind of concern about where alumni go, what they do, so they had us come and actually speak at someone's house. So it was in a panel format, we answered questions, and it was the most effective way to get new parents comfortable with the program. I'm sure each of you do something similar, um, maybe it's a different venue. And the Landmark School has actually agreed to start to do Google Plus Hangouts for that exact same reason, that it was effective as it was to put a name to a face, hear somebody talk about the school, where they were after. Um, and they're still going to continue to do the in-person panels at someone's house. It's very intimate. But for those who uh, don't make that kind of thing, whether it's a boarding program and can't travel across the country to come on a Sunday night, um, they're going to use Google Plus Hangouts. And I'm going to be um, hopefully uh, leading that charge there for them as an alumni. So today, we're going to talk about what Google Plus Hangouts is, uh, why you might want to consider to use it, um, how I use it, and how our organization uses it at Wikispaces, and then um, a couple recommendations how you might want to go forward using it or think about using it within your organization. Um, so first and foremost, let's get the definition out there. Uh, Google Plus Hangouts is a li online live video share with up to 10 people at once. And I'll get a little bit into the details of what that means, but in one room, 
you can actually have audio and video of 10 people simultaneously talking. Um, you can share desktop, you can share files, you can do instant messaging. I'm going to show you exactly how it works in a second. But some of the key takeaways that it also does um, is it's free. So I, I, I'm not going to bang this over too many heads, but ultimately everything I'm talking about is free to the user. You do not need Google Apps for Education set up in your organization to do this. You just need a Google Plus account. And I'm going to talk a little bit about why you can actually also do it under a Google Plus institutional account. The other thing is, is that while you're doing these private 10-person uh, video sessions, you can also click up one simple button and make it live and broadcast to the world. So if any of the folks on the room here have done some sort of live streaming, whether it's an event, whether it's uh, maybe an interview, uh, maybe you've used Skype in the past where you've always want to say, I want to get it out to the world, not just the people who are subscribing to it or on the call. Um, so Google has done an amazing job of integrating into YouTube to allow you with one click to broadcast live to the world. The other um, interesting thing is that once you're done with a Google Plus Hangout on air, is what they call it, on air, broadcasting live to the world, once you're done and you hit complete, that content, that video session is automatically uploaded to the YouTube account of whoever started it. So I'll talk a little bit about why if you started as an individual Google Plus account, why that will get put on your uh, YouTube page personally and why if you really want to start to use Google Plus Hangouts more and have that content be pushed to your institution page in YouTube, you're going to want to start it under the institution's name. But that's a, a detail that I'll probably follow up with on the how-tos um, as, as a follow-up blog post to this. Um, and last but not least, this is all part of Google Plus. For those of you that are kind of wondering about Google, Google Plus's Hangout, um, it's had a massive uh, adoption rate increase over the last two years. There are several reasons why. <coughs> Well, uh, several reasons why people think it is, um, and that is the fact that they have started to Google has started to integrate their content and their applications across um, their different product lines really well. One being the automatic upload into uh, YouTube, um, being able to chat, being able to add people, it's just really become seamless. And Google Plus um, is, uh, you know, kind of becoming a place for now that people can communicate about their organization, about themselves individually, and about their um, uh, cause and it's really easy as as we all know. So what I'm going to do right now is um, I'm going to walk you through exactly how you start a hangout. So I'm in Google Plus. Um, up in the right hand corner there was a button called Start Hangout. Right, it's that easy. So I click on the button Start Hangout. Um, I then get a prompt of saying, Well, who do you want to hang out with? So I find a couple people. Right now I'm going to click on Nick Creech and I'm going to name the hangout. Um, you can name it anything you want, obviously, and there's going to be a click, a short little, uh, sorry, a, a small little button down below where it says "Enable Hangouts on Air." This, this is the feature saying that you're going to want to broadcast this live to the world once you start it. Um, so I'm going to click on Hangout, and when I click on the Hangout, it's going to create this session. And what happens when this session is, it's going to show you. Now, once again, I'm just using my MacBook Air. Um, it's using the camera off that and the audio, um, but there's some great features on the left-hand side. Um, you can install a third-party app. Applications. There's one called Lower Third, which allows you to put the news feed on the on the bottom, the title of your um, company or organization. You can upload an image. Um, so what I usually do is put my name, and I usually put my Twitter sign, and I turn it on so that when um, the other individual on the other side sees me, uh, he can you know know my title and name. It also produces a iframe code, so a little href code that you can embed in any type of start, uh, any kind of landing page. So with one click of a button um, to broadcast live, it counts down simply five, four, three, two, one. You notice a little bit of a change. It'll tell you, okay, you're broadcasting live. Now you'll get another notification that says on air. Now if I wanted to add eight more people to this session, I could. Down below you would see eight versions of the video. Um, but ultimately I'm just going to sign off from Nick right now and show you what happens to the video after I've captured it. <clears throat> so I'm editing the broadcast live. Um, config right now. Um, you'll notice a few things. One is it still continues. It gets posted on my Google Plus uh, page. Um, but the most important thing here is that you'll actually see that I've generated content um, as an individual. So if this is an institutional page, you'd see some posts. People could make comments. They could ask questions. You could obviously delete it if you wanted to. But I'm going to go back to my YouTube page and I'm just going to hit refresh. And when I hit refresh, I'll actually notice that it added the emissions panel for fall. 
Um, one of the great things also about putting it up to YouTube um, when it's your own content is you can download that MP4 video and you can make edits as you want. Um, the, the interesting thing is, is that we've been using it at Wikispaces is as as it is video. So we have not been downloading and editing it and cutting it up and making it shorter. Um, we've been using it for a specific panel <clears throat> topic, which I'll explain in a bit, but um, we've been just leaving the videos as is. Um, but interestingly enough, if you get some uh, clips, you get some information from that video that you want to maybe segment out or use it somewhere else, you can obviously download that video file and make it, put it in any kind of video editing tool and make the edits as you see fit. So. There's a couple really big things I just want to quickly describe. Using Google Plus and using YouTube can greatly increase your search engine optimization when you want to be found. Um, so there's 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 a strategic reason on allowing this to be found and not being private to just your community. So I just want you to be aware that as you think this through, um, you're generating content that is going to be part of a larger, you know. Uh, communication strategy. You don't have to make it that way. You can make it casual breakout sessions, um, but just keep in mind there's some benefits to using this product that are just um, on top of kind of the ease of use and um, the effectiveness of it. So why use Google Plus Hangouts versus GoToMeeting or WebEx or Illuminate or some other product out there. Um, I really kind of boiled it down to three reasons, and they come down to um, we find it at or our organization is extremely effective um, with the massive adoption of Google Apps for Education within the <clears throat> K through 12 space. Um, people are looking for an easy way within one console to share ideas, video, audio, um, and content. So for us, it's a natural place. Um, the other is that it's extremely easy to generate a content uh, marketing program for us that's authentic. So one of the most important things that we're realizing is that instead of spending you know, weeks or months on a piece of content um, that comes out picture perfect and then we distribute it, um, which may or may not come across as being authentic, uh, video inherently is authentic, and the way we're doing it is we're making it real people talk to other real people about real topics, and we're not trying to make it picture perfect. We're not whitening anybody's teeth. Um, yes, we're making it polished, but ultimately it's real, and when someone views that content, it um, has a larger impact on them. The last thing that I think Google Plus Hangouts has done is it's taken full advantage of the visual web. Um, as we, you know, as I guess I shouldn't say, I shouldn't assume that everybody knows this, but um, the web is in its kind of uh, third phase, um, so to speak, of evolution, and it's all about being uh, visual. And I think Ed Social Media has posted a lot about how uh, imagery, uh, video, has really become um, a key component of the web. It makes up for, I don't know, over half of the percentage of the web traffic at this point and is continuing to rise. So what it, what better way to get the story about your institution out to a um, uh, audience that's authentic and leverages video and audio um, as easy as this. So for me, these are the biggest reasons that we use it at Wikispaces and why I think you might want to consider using it um, in your organization. So let me tell you a little bit about what we do at Wikispaces, how it kind of came about, and what we're planning to do moving forward. So we decided um, over the last six months to hold individual expert panels. And we talked a lot about how to deliver those expert panels. Um, we did not obviously want to do them in person. We're a very virtual company, and we're also a very uh, serve a very virtual audience. So what we decided to do was we were going to do it online. We were going to bring together these panelists around a particular subject and invite them to have a video dialogue. Um, at first, we didn't have the video component. We thought GoToMeeting would be a great example of that. We were just going to have these panels log in, have a few slides, and have people talk about it. Um, but we really wanted people to see the panelists, 
um, you know, there's so much more that you can um, interact with. One of the panelists actually spoke from his class with his class there and brought up students in the middle of the panel to voice their thoughts around it. Um, you wouldn't really be able to do that or it wouldn't have had such an impact if you hadn't had the video component. So we decided to experiment with Google Plus Hangouts. So we decided to bring in four or five individuals. Um, the first session was on blended learning and flipped classroom techniques. Um, here's the interesting thing. We created a sign-up page, but it really wasn't a sign-up. Remember how I said that these Google uh, Plus Hangouts are open to the public? Um, you can prevent people from joining them, but we broadcasted them live. So really our sign-up process was a marketing um, uh, uh, awareness kind of campaign to say, hey, this is where this event is, sign up, that means we're going to remind you that it's taking place. Um, we did not necessarily have them in some system like GoToMeeting where they had to have this username and password to log in. So ultimately, um, it was a sign up, but that's why I have that not really. Um, we promoted the event through email and through creating several different landing pages, and we also um, created a campaign uh, a social media. Now when I say campaign, I'm talking about we talked about it in the office and we said we're going to tweet about it three times. It wasn't like we developed a huge you know, marketing campaign to do this. This was really to see how effective it was. So we ran the first panel um, with uh, five people total. It went for exactly an hour and all the people happened to be based Actually, no, one of them was based on the East Coast, and uh, it worked extremely well. The panelists both enjoyed it as well as the audience. We had over 500 people viewing at one particular time, um, and uh, we really thought it was success, and it was extremely easy. There was some front-end work that we had to do to make sure it worked well, like designing the landing page, thinking about the questions that we wanted to ask, make sure the people that we had in the room were the right people, and then kind of do a dry run just to make sure. Once we did all that, it was extremely easy, and we found out that everybody who viewed it found some piece of nugget of information that was valuable to them. So that brings up the kind of last two points. One is the fact that you know when you think about how to view the content that's being broadcasted out from Google Plus Hangouts, there's a multiple different ways that you can view it. One is you can create a landing page and you can use that embed href iframe code and you can put that on a landing page. So that way the experience is branded for your uh, organization. So you could have your logo, you could have your title, and it just embeds the YouTube player within a page. Um, we did that as one option. The other option is if you have a Google Plus Hangout and you're part of my circle, you can actually view the Hangout right within your Google Plus account. The last way you can do it is you can actually find it through YouTube and there's a URL that gets produced which you could share with folks. Um, some of the ideas that came up was why don't we take that uh, iframe code and put it on our blog and just point everybody towards our blog to watch it or it, pointed everybody towards our website to watch it, to drive more traffic. Um, we wanted to make it casual, we wanted to make it very separate from our normal day-to-day -day stuff, so we created a landing page, um, and that was where most of the people watched the event. So how are we thinking about um, measuring the success of this? One is the fact is the, the, the amount of time it takes to actually do the event is drastically lower than having to worry about registering people. Um, it's built into the system to automatically post the video back up to the server, uh, up to YouTube. Um, so we wanted to measure how effective was it in our time to produce high quality content. Now, the thing to keep in mind is when you start to think about video, there's this kind of slippery slope that you can get really carried away with. All right, I use my MacBook Air uh, camera. I don't use a mic. Um, our lighting is just our office lighting. There's incremental things you can do, which I'll include in the follow-up post in the on Ed Social Media uh, blog about this. Is there's small incremental things you can do? You can buy a very simple lighting kit for under hundred dollars. You can buy an external camera, web camera, to make the high definition rate. You can put banners behind you. Um, one of the things I learned first was when I first did it, I had a completely white wall behind me, and it looked extremely boring, right? So these are all incremental things you can do, but you don't have to do them to start. So what we're thinking about doing is we're thinking about kind of morphing this idea of doing a panel. Uh, we're still going to try to do the panels monthly, uh, but we're also going to open up um, this idea of having a virtual open house or an office hours where we're going to get two or three people from our organization, we're going to get on a Google Plus Hangout, and we're going to invite our users to ask us questions, anything they want, kind of like a, a all-hands meeting, um, but obviously for the external audience. So we're going to do that. And, and, and 
the other thing I want to point out is that we are purposely deciding what the focus is for each one of these kind of agendas. So the first one is about educating our users about great topics that are happening in the field, and this next one is trying to support our users to get the most out of the platform. So <clears throat> my recommendation, <clears throat> excuse me, is to start small. I mentioned a lot of things which um, could be used and increase the complexity, right? So ultimately, um, what I'm suggesting is when you think about using Google Plus Hangouts for your community, I think of taking a tangible need. Um, maybe it is trying to connect current parents or prospecting parents with alumni um, and what they're doing and where they live and what their lives are about. Or maybe it's um, sharing some sort of piece of information about your arts program to prospecting families. I would think in those simple terms. Don't think about creating a long, you know, strategic, you know, uh, eight-month program. Just think about doing it for one event and see if it's successful. Um, one of the one of the things I did as I started to think about for the Landmark School was how could they best use Google Plus Hangouts to effectively get some of the things that they're trying to do done over the next year. And I really broke it down into kind of like four areas. One is that their admissions team could use it, um, their alumni office could use it to help alumni network, uh, maybe there's a bunch of alumni that are in the arts that could get online and share about their work um, in a very casual, easy manner. Development is a great one, not specifically for um, fundraising necessarily, but maybe creating a general awareness to alumni what the school is like today. Um, it's a great one that you could have, um, I don't know, you could maybe have an uh, individual uh, donor talk about w the way that the school impacted him or her and what they're going to do about it in their lives. And you could open it up to prospecting families, you could open it up to alumni, you could open it up to whoever. Um, and the other is core programs. I've seen and talked with a few schools here in the Bay Area that are thinking about using Google Plus not just in communicating what they do internally to the external world, but they're talking about how they can bridge the gap between subject matter experts, say in English, economics, with their actual classroom. So they took a core, one of the schools is considering connecting a group of core ec economists to talk to their students every month about projects. So bringing these two groups together and then broadcasting it live and having people from all over the world contribute and make comments. Um, and that becomes content that your marketing departments, your communication um, folks can use to do a lot of fun things with. But ultimately, it's enhancing their core programs. So I would think about it in these four ways. Think about each one. I wouldn't think about doing them all at once. Um, you might want to think about what the most pressing one is. And we're, we're well into the admission season, I'm sure. Um, so maybe it's admissions. And I came up with two kind of, I would call them, use case for admissions. So the first one is um, to think about bringing someone from your school, this admissions ambassador, maybe it's the, uh, at a boarding school, it's the uh, dean of students to come and talk about what life's like um, and to open that up to broadcast it live to all the parents of all the folks that are applying to the school and maybe even current parents and to kind of go through a set of questions. And I recommend, um, I'm kind of the person that likes to over prepare and then have it go extremely well and, and that's okay if I over prepare. So maybe it is you think about every single question you want to ask that person, you provide it to them, you go through it once. Um, but then it becomes, and during the session, maybe it becomes ad hoc and it kind of goes down a, a certain road and if you're answering it authentically and honestly and being very approachable, um, it's all very, very uh, beneficial. Um, the other thing is to think about it as who do you want to uh, invite to this. And um, there's a couple ways you could let it organically happen or you can strategically invite maybe key prospects that you want to go to the school. Maybe folks in the profile in the admission software that says they're concerned about a boarding program. I need really need to get them in front of this content. Um, and the other is um, that you can repeat these. Uh, you know, not everybody's going to be able to attend these. You can use the recorded sessions, but ultimately, this is a really easy way to get these incredible people that work at each one of your institutions out to the rest, the rest of the world. The second is the one that I always hear is um, uh, uh, the admissions office wants to use the alumni pool as what could be for the prospecting families, right? That's probably one of the most pressing questions that a lot of admissions offices get is, where do your alumni end up? 
what do they do, what do they like, you know, do they all become investment bankers, or are they all beach bums, what is it? Um, and so these panels are a fantastic way for you to connect. Um, maybe it's even weekly during your, or, or, or maybe every, every two weeks during your admission season, you get a bunch of alumni that work out in the field or in some sort of unique um, place. Um, all they need is a laptop and a high-speed uh, internet connection with a camera and a mic on their machine, and they are going to um, uh, have an extremely larger impact than you just telling them, "Hey, they work in uh, you know archaeology. One works in a bank, um, but they're the way they dress, the way they kind of hold themselves is going to speak obviously louder than than what you could ever write." Um, and, and experiment. Try different ways to do this. There's no right or wrong. That's the one thing I want to kind of also hone, hone in on is that um, it's all about you finding what works best for your community um, and measure the different success criteria that you define. Maybe it's just getting views. Maybe it's answering questions to the um, alumni. Uh, maybe there was an incident at your school and you need to address it. Um, it's a great way to do new program launches. It's a great way to kind of uh, think about announcing um, new interesting things about your environment. So the the biggest thing here is that I always like to talk about extending your reach. Um, and one of the things that occurred to me this morning on my way into work was um, it's important to extend your reach, right? Using this Google Plus Hangouts extends your reach to people and audiences you might not normally um, communicate with. But the, the important part is that it's an it, it's different than just creating a video and blasting it out to the world. A, because it's live, and B, because all the systems that I showed you allow you to have two-way communications. You can comment, you can interact. Maybe some of you, I don't have, I only have one monitor up right now, so I don't know if anybody's tweeting about this. But imagine having that at the bottom of the video, at the bottom of YouTube. Um, it's all that kind of experience bringing it together. So not only does it increase your reach, but the quality of your reach um, is really uh, tremendously impacted by doing it through Google Plus Hangouts. So with that, I just want to say thanks to Ed Social Media. I don't have a clock running. Hopefully, I didn't go too over or I'm too under. Um, but I just wanted to give a whole a kind of an overview of um, what Google Plus looks like, how to get started, um, and what we can do now is we can just take questions or we can kind of talk about different subjects. Yeah, that was awesome, Ryan. Thank you so much. I'm okay. I love learning too, and um, you definitely taught me a lot. I think the coolest thing about this is that it seems so intuitive and easy. Is that kind of how you figured it out? Yeah, it's it's remarkable. I mean, Google has done an amazing job. It, you know, this is Google Plus Hangouts has been around for a while now, and it's been this kind of evolution of their products of chat video sharing, YouTube. Um, but it's really gotten to the point now that I would say that it's um, so easy that it is probably easier than uh, writing an email in their product. So I think one of the reasons why, and that's just to create a Hangout, but to consume a Hangout, all you need is a web browser and someone sends you a link and you go to YouTube and it just pops up. So I think you're absolutely right. I think that the ease of use factor for folks is incredibly important when they start to think about which tools to use. Yeah, that's awesome. And so um, it seems like you guys are kind of at the forefront. Do you know um, other, I, I guess you're kind of in the bubble of San Francisco, so maybe you know yeah. more people than, than we do, but have you heard of other schools actually using this yet or just kind of I, you know, tossing around ideas about using it right now? Yeah, there's two, I see it kind of, it's a two-prong approach for schools. One is that a lot of schools are evaluating it on how to use it in their classroom. So the whole bl the blended learning, flipped classroom, um, a lot of schools might have a project period. I know Urban um, here in San Francisco and I know a few other schools um, are evaluating how to use it for times that the class is not physically meeting. Um, they're not broadcasting live, they're not generating content necessarily for um, their marketing communications or their missions need. Um, I do know a few schools in the Bay Area are starting to adopt it for um, things like alumni councils, things like communicating with um, their alumni. Um, organizations here are really heavily using Google Plus for announcements uh, of new products, new events, um, brands, you name it. And I think schools, once they get a level of I mean, for me, it's the best of all worlds of all the products I've used around video sharing and collaboration. So I'm a big Skype user when I Skype clients or people. 
that are having trouble with their product. Um, it's very private, right? It's 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 this idea that it's we're on a call, and um, the same thing with GoToMeeting. Um, but what's really wild is that there are times when I can envision working with somebody going through a piece of content that a lot of other people could benefit from. Um, I think that schools will potentially start to adopt that, and I've already heard of some of them using a Google Plus methodology um, to kind of get that out to the world and not make it so private. Cool. Sounds great. All right. Well, I think that's it. Um, thank you so much for pulling all this together. We really appreciate it. And we will um, export this not quite as easily and seamlessly as it appears you can do it in Google+, Plus, but we will do it and get it onto our blog over at Ed Social Media. Um, I want to extend a special thanks to our webinar sponsors, Admissions Quest and Proof, um, for supporting our free webinar series. So we also have an awesome event coming up in April. Um, on April 2nd, over at the Walnut Hill School for the Arts, it's our Ed Social Media Summit. Ryan, you were there last year, um, so hopefully you can join us again this year, but we're yes. really looking forward to having it um, down at Antonio Viva's uh, old stomp or current stomping grounds. So, anything else, Ryan, before we sign off? No, I think the last thing I could say is thank you for making this happen. And I encourage anyone um, that's attending this or anybody that watches this, if you feel if you feel like you have questions, reach out to me. I'd be happy to walk you through things in more detail. And um, best of luck with everything. Sounds great. Thanks so much, Ryan. Okay. Bye bye. Okay.